Hi dear students, welcome back to our video lecture. Next to part is intestine region. Intestine. See, this is the intestine region of our elementary canal. We know intestine have two regions, small intestine and large intestine. So first is small intestine. Small intestine. The small intestine is the longest part of our elementary canal. Longest part of our elementary canal. That is about 6 meters length. So small intestine alone have 6 meters length. So this is the longest part of our elementary canal. Small intestine is the longest part of our elementary canal. Then this small intestine consists of 3 regions. Let's see what are the 3 regions of small intestine. See, look here. This one is the beginning of small intestine. This portion. This small intestine begins with a C-shaped region. See, your NCRT book states it is the C-shaped region. Actually, this, uh, this part will be found as this somewhat U-like structure. So, this small intestine beginning, this is the C-shaped or the U-shaped portion, the C or the U-shaped region, this portion is called as duodenum. So small intestine begins with a C-shaped region or the U-shaped part of our small intestine is called as duodenum. This is the beginning of small intestine. Duodenum. Then this duodenum opens to second portion, this black shaded region here. The middle and the cold portion, second one. The middle and cold part of small intestine called jejunum. This middle and cold portion of our small intestine called the jejunum. This is the middle as well as the cold portion. This portion is jejunum. And third one, this portion. This is the highly cold region of our small intestine. The highly cold region of small intestine is called as ileum. Ileum is the highly cold part of our small intestine. So small intestine consists of three regions. They are the beginning is the U-shaped or the C-shaped region called as duodenum. The middle cold portion called as jejunum. And the posterior highly cold region is ileum. The posterior highly cold region ileum. So ileum is the highly cold region. So ileum is actually the longest part. Ileum is the longest part. So particularly ileum is the longest part of our elementary canal. Okay. So ileum, this is the longest part of our elementary canal. These are the three regions of small intestine. Okay. Next is large intestine. Next part is large intestine. As like small intestine, this large intestine also have three regions. So this large intestine consists of three regions. They are, let's see what are the three regions of large intestine. It has three regions. They are, first one, Cecum. First part is cecum. See here, this portion is cecum. Cecum is here. This is the cecum portion of the large intestine. So this part is cecum. Next, this entire portion, this is the longest portion. This is called as colon. Second one, colon. Cecum, second is called as colon, third one, rectum. These are the three regions of large intestine. So large intestine consists of three regions. They are cecum, then colon and rectum. These are the three regions. First part is cecum. Look here. This is the ileum. Ileum opens to cecum. Ileum usually opens to cecum. The opening between ileum and cecum is guarded by a wall. 
opening between ileum and cecum guarded by a wall is called as it is ileo cecal wall opening between this ileum and this cecum guarded by a wall this wall is called as ileo cecal wall what is the role of wall performed in our body walls always perform to prevent the backward flow of the substances or material it always prevent the backward flow here this ileo cecal valve role is it prevent the backward flow of undigested waste from this cecum to small intestine see once the undigested waste came here this ileo cecal valve prevent the entry of this undigested waste to the small intestine so ileo cecal valve prevent the backward flow of the undigested waste or feces to this ileum that's the role of ileo cecal valve then this is cecum this cecum this cecum reduced to a finger like structure this cecum reduced to a finger like structure called as it is the reduced form of cecum it is called the vermiform appendix the cecum reduced to vermiform appendix so this cecum reduced to vermiform appendix in humans it is very much reduced cecum is reduced the cecum reduced to vermiform appendix see this cecum and vermiform appendix were believed to be cellulose digestive ancestors they were cellulose digestive ancestors but they have no digestive role in present day forms so this cecum and vermiform appendix were considered as the cecum and vermiform appendix are vestigial in man so these are the vestigial organ the cecum and vermiform appendix are vestigial in man this vermiform appendix contain lymphatic tissues it is a lymphoid organ too in the chapter health and disease you studied one of the secondary lymphoid organ is this vermiform appendix because this vermiform appendix contain lymphatic tissue hence it is considered as a secondary lymphoid organ this vermiform appendix then infection and inflammation of this vermiform appendix is called as appendicitis infection and inflammation of this vermiform appendix called as appendicitis then surgical removal the ultimate treatment of this appendicitis is the surgical removal of this vermiform appendix surgical removal of vermiform appendix is called as appendicectomy appendicectomy ectomy removal surgical removal the surgical removal of this vermiform appendix called as appendicectomy okay then this cecum has some symbiotic microbes another role of cecum it has some symbiotic microbes the cecum has some symbiotic microbes then that's all about cecum next is colon next to part is colon colon is the longest part of large intestine colon the longest part of large intestine then this colon consists of four regions let's see what are the four regions of this colon this colon consists of four region they are see this part of the colon is ascending colon then it consists of a transverse colon a descending colon and the sigmoid or pelvic colon so colon consists of four regions so four regions in colon they are what are the four regions this part of the colon is ascending colon ascending colon see here this is the transverse colon transverse colon then this part is called as the descending region descending colon then here this is the s shaped region 
this S shaped part of colon is sigmoid colon or it is also called as pelvic colon sigmoid colon or pelvic colon the sigmoid or pelvic colon then opens to rectum so these are the different regions of colon another one see on the entire length of this colon look here see a line passes through the entire length of colon it is not a line it is a muscle say longitudinal muscle seen on the end wall a longitudinal muscle passes through the wall of this colon a longitudinal muscle passes through the wall of colon called as tinea cole tinea cole is a longitudinal muscle on the wall of colon that is tinea cole another one we can see pouches see these pouches or pocket like structures the pouches on the wall of colon these pouches on the wall of colon called as hostrum these pouches on the wall of colon are called as hostrum these are the regions of colon next is rectum what's the role of rectum it store feces so feces stored here rectum store feces rectum opens out through the anus rectum open out through the anus so this rectum region this rectum region opens out through the anus this rectum open out through the anus and this opening is guarded by two sphincters this opening is guarded by two sphincters two types of sphincters are there this opening is guarded by two types of sphincters they are the involuntary internal anal sphincter the involuntary internal anal sphincter and the voluntary external anal sphincter the voluntary external anal sphincter so that is the opening of anus is regulated by sphincter muscle they are involuntary muscle is internal anal sphincter and the external anal sphincter is a voluntary muscle so these are the different regions of large intestine okay